Hello, is this thing on? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another video. And today I wanna do a simple what's going on if you're new to 3D printing. Um, I suggest you start here um, before you've unpacked your 3D printer or even before you've purchased a 3D printer. Start here. Now, all links to, to software I'm gonna be using will be provided in the link in the video description down below. And today I'm gonna to get you introduced to the simple world of Chudubox. I am using Chudubox version 1.93. This is the basic version. This is not the pro version. You'll know it's not the pro version because it says right up here, try Chudubox Pro. I, again, I'm gonna put this to you in the simple terms. If you're planning on making simple little trinkets and gifts for family and friends stick with basic if you're planning on making production grade models for selling and various other things like this and 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 this then you know if you want to start your own business then you might want to look at getting a pro license okay but for now we're going to stick with the basic program that way you can all learn we all got to start simple i mean it is what it is so what we're going to do is we're going to get used to the interface now when you first boot up the program it's going to ask you what printer you have at this point you can just click on settings click the little add printer button and then you can pick any printer or even the printer that you're going to buy so say that we're going to buy the flash forge uh, actually, no, let's let's go whole hog. Okay, we're gonna get a Vox Lab series. Oof, that's a big one, it's a nice one. Okay, and it'll automatically import in basic settings. Now, what that means is each printer, even though you can have two identical printers from the same manufacturer side by side, they're each going to have their own quirks. Okay, it's called a machine spirit, if you will, if you're a mechanic or into the 40k universe. Here you're going to pick your basic resin settings. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to leave all of this alone. Okay, but the resin settings, you can adjust this to the type of resin that you've purchased. Okay, and then your print bed. Now, these are the basic, again, the basic settings. Now, you can adjust these later on if you want a more detailed print or if you just want a basic prototype. Again, it's all about what you are doing with your software. If you want high detailed miniatures, very similar to this Captain America burst, okay? Or very similar to my, you know, demons and stuff like that and whatnot, then you're gonna want to lower the layer height settings, okay? That's this little section here. That's the thickness of each layer to be printed. Okay, I'll explain layers a little bit later on in the video. And your bottom layer count, you always want to set that to about 10. 8 to 10 is really good. That's the starting bed that the rest of the model is going to attach to. Okay, Some people will go whole hog and even put it up to 15 to, or 20. I don't suggest that. Uh, exposure time, that will be adjusted depending on the temperature of where your printer is. If it's in a colder environment, you're gonna to wanna to up the exposure time. If you're in a warmer environment, you're gonna to wanna to lower the exposure time. Okay, so just a heads up for you. Temperature does dictate what your printer does. Also, if you notice behind me, my printers are out of direct sunlight because these are UV printers. Now, if you're using an FDM printer, which is a uh, localized plastic extruder style printer, that's fine, that doesn't matter. Those settings will be different. This is just for resin 3D printers for, for now, for today. And then you've got your lift speeds. You can adjust these to lift the heads up and down and, and the print bed up and down. And so you can somewhat drastically increase slash decrease the speed of your printers. I suggest, because you're new to this, that you leave everything as it is. Because later on, we're going to be using another p p free piece of software that's going to fix any of the, the issues. If you get confused here, don't worry. Okay, This is what these video series is for. This video series is designed to help you understand 3D printing. Okay, Now, G-code. Don't worry about this unless, of course, you are an uh, um, engineer in G-code. This is literally how the G-code is read and started by your printer's motherboard, okay? 
So don't worry about the G-code tab. That's for advanced, true advanced uh, 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 printer people. And then you've got, you've got your actual basic advanced. Now, depending on your printer type, whether it be 2K, 4K, or 6, 6 uh, 2K, 4K, or 8K, that is just the general detail level. Like obviously, you know, you've seen 4K movies, you've seen, you know, well, obviously 8K gives you more crisper detail, but at the same time, it takes longer to print. Okay, so AA can be used to offset some lower printers, and if you just highlight certain options, you will get small little pop-ups that explain to you what certain things do. Okay, so I'm going to turn the AA off because, again, this is just a tutorial video. And so we're going to now close that, and then you're going to get a print bed. This is literally what your printer would be doing. Now, we've set up the environment. Let's put an STL or an object file in. So what you're going to do is going to go up to these three little stripes, click it, then you're going to click on open, and then you're going to navigate your way to your 3Ds, 3D files. Here we've got some examples. Here's that Captain America. But what I'm going to do is go to that Captain America burst in here, and then of course, view large, and we're going to open him. And then there it is. There's our Captain America burst. Now, this is a, 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 how the file was saved as an orientation by the creator. So how are we going to rotate it so that we can see it? Well, like most programs, you're going to want to click on the rotate bar. Again, if you just highlight it for a brief second, you'll get a little tutorial of what it does. Now, don't worry if English is not your language. Okay, when you install the program, the initial Chidu Box program, you can select what language that you want to use, but English is the common language that's used. So then you want to gonna click on your Z axis to rotate it on the blue axis. Okay. Green rotates it on the green axis, and red rotates it on the red axis. There you go. And so now our Captain America is standing up. Okay, so you've gone from this. Now, how do you go to this? We're getting to that. Now, when it comes to 3D printing a model, okay, very similar to how a house is built, to how, how a structure is built, you have to do a scaffolding system, and that's called supports. Okay, so what we're going to do now is because we've lifted him up, but the model is hollow, as you can see. Now, sometimes you're going to get a model that's not hollow, so how do you hollow a model? you would highlight up at top, see where it says hollow? You click that, set your wall thickness to your model. I usually leave it at 1.2 millimeters, and then you just click start. And that's it. It'll then hollow out the model, which will save you resin, but, this is a, a big but, because the model is now hollow, resin, like all water or all liquids, will get trapped. So you're going to have to add a hole into your model so that the loose that the, the uncured resin can drain out. Now, how would you add a hole? The button's right next to it. It's called dig hole. You'd select that. What kind of hole do you want? Square, hexagonal, circle. I, I like to go with a square. And you would just click add hole. And then before you know it, you've just now added holes into your model so that the resin can drain. Now, this does mean that there is technically a hole in your print, okay, in your print, and so you're gonna have to use something like modeling putty or Bondo or, or something similar to cover that hole up once the model is cured. Okay, so that's a little little tip for you there if you want to save resin and protect and various other things. So now we've figured out how to hollow the model, we've figured out how to add holes to the model, so that we can drain the excess resin, we've got to figure out how are we going to structurally adhere the model to our print bed. Now bear in mind, this is technically upside down. What I mean by that is, when you print the model, see how it's going from head to bottom? How a printer would print it is from bottom to top. Okay, so technically, <laughs> technically, if this is your print bed, okay, it would be upside down like this, being dipped in and out of the resin. Okay, so 
in layman's terms, what the what Studio Box and various other three D software has done is flipped it so that you can easily understand it in a in a contextual basis. But this is good, but it's not that good. We're going to have some overhangs, namely his chin is going to be an overhang, his nose is going to be an overhang, and his ears are going to be an overhang. So how do we fix overhangs? Well, that's easy. What we can do is we go to our rotate button, and then see that red one? You can either rotate him forward, which I don't suggest because all the details on his face, will rotate him back. Now what that does is that will lean the model back 45 degrees, okay, which means there's a lot more surface area for your printer to grab a hold of. Now, I'm going to move him real quick. Oh, I didn't want to add that hole into his chest, but that's fine. Yeah, that's one of the issues currently with the free software is you cannot undig a hole, if that makes sense. Once you've clicked add a hole, it's there permanently for some reason, and that they are working on that, and it's coming out in the next, there'll be a fix for that in the next update. So what we're gonna do is we're now gonna rotate him on the blue axis. There we go. Now, on the far, far right, you click on this. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to run an, a, an algorithm. Now, here, this is where you're going to set up your scaffolding. Okay, And again, if you're curious about any of these options, just highlight it with your mouse. Let me move my camera real quick. There we go. If you have any curiosities about anything, just highlight it. And it will quite literally explain to you in real time, you know, densities, things of that nature. It, 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 if you have any questions, again, also there's, there's the discords, there's the Facebook forums, there's there's Instagram. You can just you can even go on Twitter. You can tweet directly at GDBox and someone will help you. So what I'm going to do is when it comes to contact shapes, I always select none, just personal preference. And then what I do is I set my density at about 50, 54, 56 with an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, because we've offset the model by 45 degrees. So then you just click plus platform. The algorithm does its thing. And there we go. These are basic supports. Okay, does this mean that the model will print? Who knows? Now, the reason why I say who knows is because, again, this is machine learned, okay? Now, clearly, my print works, okay, because I've printed the model. But what I found out when I printed my model was that I had some issues. Now, when you add a hole, and you can just zoom in using your middle mouse button, I noticed that when I added certain holes, that's considered an overhang, hence the, the red is considered an overhang. Now you can see some slight little red overhangs here and here. Um, again, depending on your printer and its it, its its details, 2K, 4K, 6K, 8K, you know, they can adjust certain aspects. Now, what I also found out was that his ear, as you can see here, is a big overhang. Sorry, Chris Chris Evans, but your ears are a little bit on the large side. So of course you're going to have to add some supports. So we added some supports there, and we're going to add a support here. Now, on the pro version of the software, it will detect those areas and adjust accordingly. But like I said, this is a basic version of the software. So if you're a, a weekend printer, or you, like I said, you're just printing a trinket for, for family, friends, for Christmas, birthdays, etc., this software, the, the, the basic software, is perfect for you. However, if you are like me and you use this on a daily basis, I mean, I literally have gone through three bottles of resin already this morning, printing off things for customers and various other things. And so, like I said, I use this software all the time. So now if you are, if you feel that you're happy and safe with this level of, of supports, what you want to do, what you're going to do then is then click on the little gear cog and then you're going to click slice. Now the computer is going to take little mini screenshots, okay, of each layer. This this model has 1,720 individual pictures or layers, okay? And you can see them all by scrolling this down. Now this is where you can be really, 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 really smart 
and you can also click on show isolated layers. It's going to now scan every single one of those images. Now, depending on your computer, depending on your, on your hardware, this may take a while. I've got a really fast computer, so this tends to be really, really quick. Okay, so don't worry about that. So give it a few minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes I'm doing prints that are 3,000 layers. No joke. That printer, the Flash Forge has gone through 11,000, no, 110,000 layers, which for a printer is a lot. <laughs> uh, and so there. Now, what it's done is it's detected and found some possible layer issues, namely here and here, as you can see. Now, you could then go back, readjust your supports, but I think we'll be okay. I, I genuinely think we will be okay with those. So what, when you are happy where you're at, now, this will tell you right here, the name of the machine, the resin type, the volume of resin, how much you're going to need, the weight of the model, 30.9 grams is nothing, um, the price of the model and the time. Now, the price of the model does not factor in cost of electricity and various other small other factors like a failed print, things of that nature. It just covers in the, the total cost of how much it costs you in resin. Now, it's going to take six hours, 31 minutes and 23 seconds. So we're going to click save. OK, I'm going to go to our desktop and we're going to save it as Captain America Toot. We're going to save it as an FDG file. Now, depending on your printer, some printers work with FDGs, some printers work with SVGX. Some it, it all depends on on the file format of your printer. Check the settings and read the instruction manuals of your printers before you start printing anything or setting up anything or trying to level anything. Trust me, guys. I know it's a teeth clenching moment. Like, why would I want to look at an instruction manual? The instruction manuals are there for a reason. The instruction manuals are there to help you, okay? They're there to help you get the best out of the item that you've just purchased. Some 3D printers are not, are not cheap, some 3D printers are. Just because one printer is $150 and one printer is $1,500, you know, fundamentally yes they do basically the same thing the difference is is some have auto leveling beds some have screen protectors some have uh, uh, network integration which means like my flash forge i can hook up a lan cable to it and just print straight to it like it's a regular paper printer and various other bells and whistles and whatnot some even have better upgraded screens 2k versus 8k you'll notice the difference when you print a model on an 8k printer versus a 2k printer just trust me on this now now that our, our file has been written what I like to do is leave this up okay so I'm just gonna hit the little down screen this is one of my bands that I like to listen to this is uh, <laughs> mushroom head so we're gonna get bring up another program now that this program is called UV tools you can get it on github it is free it you Bear in mind, there are some people out there that are trying to sell you copies of UV tools, okay? You can get the free version from GitHub. Again, links will be in the video description. Now, what this does is we're gonna grab our file. Okay, so we're gonna grab our Captain America file. We're gonna drag it in. Now, what this program's doing is it's literally decoding each layer and laying it on top of each other and checking it. Very similar to how animators use original pieces of paper if to, to do animations. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little shield icon. Well, I'm going to move my head first. There we go. We're going to click on this little shield icon. Okay. Now, here it's telling me that there are certain settings, okay, that are out of alignment. Okay. UV tools. What UV tools also does is it contacts the manufacturers and, and, and scours certain forums and whatnots to find the perfect settings. Like it's telling me that my model is out of alignment. 
it's telling me that my wait time for the Cura Zero Zero is recommended to be 15 to 2. It's telling me that uh, certain other things are out of alignment, that my bottom layers is 10 and it should be 5. You highlight those, you click apply. Then you click yes. Give it a few seconds. And bish bash bosh, done. There we go. Everything's been sorted. Now it's also come up with some other issues. Again, highlight those, click apply. There we go. It's now fixed those applied suggestions. Now, see the little nuke button up here? Don't worry, it doesn't mean you're going to kill anything. Okay. It just means now it's going to run some smart algorithms and this will take some time. So I might have to speed the video up to, to get it under the 30 minute mark. But here we go. You just click detect. And now it is going to scan every individual layer. So if you've got a cup of coffee, enjoy a sip. Now it's detecting any resin traps. The time that you put in here will save you over there. Okay? You've got to understand this, okay? Even pre-supported miniatures that you purchase, okay? I even do this with pre-supported miniatures. Okay? So it's found that there is some islands... It's found some resin traps and it's even found a suction cup. Now, suction cups are really bad because that means that there's like, too much pressure being pulled on the on the FEP sheet of your printer and it could cause it to tear and resin could do it go everywhere. So that's not good. So what this software will do is I'll highlight where these suction cups possibly are. Now we can we've got two options. We can drill the suction cups or we can fill in those voids. And we're gonna fill in those voids. No more suction cups. It's that easy now we'll look at the resin traps now these are small interior resin traps and what we can do is right click again fill solidify no more resin traps now let's take a look at where these uh, um, okay so these are, these are just minor like I said they're, they're just minor it, they won't interfere with the print so what we can do is go click on the little uh, little toolkit and then what we can do is I leave everything as it is, all little check marks as it is, and I just click repair layers and issues. Yes. Now it will do its best using its algorithms in conjunction with Chidu boxes to help you figure out any of your layer issues, any of your overhangs, any of your, some resin traps may reappear, some overhangs may reappear, some uh, uh, suction cups may reappear, but don't worry. And we are almost done. Okay. Like I said, this will take some time and it's very RAM intensive. So if you've got limited RAM on your laptop or your computer, UV tools can eat up a lot of RAM. Plus the fact I'm also recording on this machine too. So I'm, I'm taxing my little CPU. <laughs> but as you can see, it it's doing its job that like i said the, the the time that you put in here saves you at your printer okay so it got rid of quite a few islands but it introduced a few resin traps okay and that's fine so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through these resin traps okay these are just basic resin traps that we can easily just do the same thing so we're going to go control a highlight them all right click fill solidify there we go now and just like that these basic little off layers are just that they're off layers now what you can do at this point is now go file save yes let it save the file and that's it you've now got a captain america print ready to go this file right here is now ready to go. So then what you, you would do is you would take your, your USB drive, 
You put it in your USB port. You wait for the bunk, bunk, bunk. You then grab the file, copy it in. USB 2. Not the fastest. <laughs> Again, get yourself a sip of coffee. Just like that, you then take it over to your printer, bung it in, put, set your printer up, level the bed, pour your resin in, hit print, find the Captain America print, hit print, hit OK, and away you go. And then, and that's another thing, running it through UV tools, and I'll even show it to you real quick again. Let's bring up UV tools running our file through uv tools and bear in mind it did say it would take about six hours and some change with uh, chidi box in fact we've got chidi box right here chidi box said six hours 31 minutes and 23 seconds after running it through uv tools and some correct settings the time has increased to seven hours eight minutes the reason why as i said it's adjusted your model and corrected any incorrections or imperfections Okay, no software is perfect. No software can ever be perfect. Okay, guys, but that is how you can go from a basic STL file that you purchased or you find on, on Thingiverse or Colts or various other websites into an actual model. Now, if you have any questions, comments, queries, please leave them in the descript in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer them. If you're new around here, please hit the subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Give the video a like. And I will see you in the next video, my friends. Ciao.